you have seen AI tools create apps in seconds, but today we are asking a deeper question. How do those generated apps really perform on your phone? Some AI builders generate web apps, some create React Native apps, and only one of them, Dreamflow, builds its apps with Flutter. So let's compare how these apps actually behave under real-world stress like complex animations, long lists of scrolls, and native features like video playback, sensors, etc. Because building fast is great, but they also need to run smooth, right? So we ran the same benchmark apps on a mid-range phone with 4GB RAM, Helio G81 CPU, Mali G52 MC2 GPU, and a 6.67-inch 90Hz display. So we designed six real-world UI tests that push each framework's rendering and interaction limits. The kind of things you actually feel as a user, you know, scrolling, animations, gestures, sensors, and visual effects. And these are the tests on your screen that we performed on each app. Now, each of these screens were built using the same AI prompt across all platforms. So we could compare how smoothly they render, respond, and handle complex visuals. However, in some cases, we had to provide a few additional instructions later because the initial versions had bugs that prevented proper testing or fair comparison. So before we dive into the results, a quick note on how these tests were conducted. Each screen was generated using the same UI prompt and we restarted the app before every test to make sure the conditions were fair. But this wasn't just a performance test, by the way. It also reflected how easily each framework works with LLMs and AI builders, etc. Even though the same instructions were given, the outcomes weren't always identical. Some platforms required multiple refinements and bug fixes, while others got it right in few prompts. So in few cases, certain features were not fully implemented because the LLM could not generate a bug-free code for that particular use case. But also note that whatever AI builders or IDEs that we used for this experiment, we used the auto mode for selection of the LLM models, which internally selects the correct model for the task. So when you notice differences in the behavior across tests, across platforms, just remember that this is not just a performance test, but this is also a test to see which framework is more AI friendly. All right, so let's talk about the first test, which is a image grip score test. The instructions and the prompt is on your screen right now. It's basically a grid with 1000 plus image cards and each card is 50 by 50 pixels. Um, and it shows a fixed image from pixel.photo site. Uh, each image also loads lazily as you scroll. Now let's start with the React app first. Okay, so as we tap on the button, we see a delay in navigation, which is surprising because the images are loaded on page load. And uh, the images are loading one by one as we scroll, which is the instruction given. Uh, let's make sure that this is loaded. Uh, so let's fast forward this, I guess. Okay, so as you see, it took an entire minute to scroll and display a thousand images. Now, once we have all the images loaded, if you notice, there is a blank canvas when you scroll too fast in the place where the cards are supposed to be. And it is mostly because of uh, the how JavaScript threads work. When you scroll too fast, the browser's main JavaScript thread can't keep up with the demand to remove the old images and draw the new one on the screen, creating this visual lag. Okay, next up we have React Native. And uh, again, I see a big delay navigating from the home screen to the image grid screen. But once the screen opens up, the React Native performance was much better than the React app. And it only took around 11 seconds to actually scroll through the whole list, even though both are 1000 plus image, image grid. Uh, there is no blank canvas when we do a fast scroll, which is good, and the scroll speed is moderate as well. 
Now let's try the Flutter app and there is no delay in navigation which is great and the images are loading quite fast as we scroll through the list. As you know the prompt actually mentions to lazy load the images so this behavior is expected and in fact when we do a fast scroll compared to React there is no blank list here. Uh, the scroll speed is also a bit faster than React Native if you compare both. The next test is the animations test where we asked uh, it to create a grid of 100 colored cards that continuously move either up, down or side to side. They also change color dynamically and we also gave a bunch of animation instructions that is on your screen right now which is uh, the speed of each animation, the movement, uh, some formulas as well. So let's see our first app. So the React animation test looks uh, good here as it follows the instructions for the vertical and horizontal movement. But I don't think it followed uh, the rotational instructions given as I don't see any rotation here happening. And as I mentioned earlier, these tests are also conducted to check which framework is more AI friendly and can get take your prompts to code faster with lesser bugs. Uh, in this case, it took only two prompts to get to this state. Next, uh, we have the React Native app and as soon as I open the screen, I notice a certain lag in animations and even though some vertical and horizontal movements are fast and smooth, but there is a bit of jump happening in certain cards if you notice. It could be a bug in the code as well or perhaps a fail in performance, but in this case, it actually took three prompts just to get to the state. Now, let's try Flutter and I I think this seemed like the smoothest uh, platform in this test as it shows a physics-based bouncy effect, if you notice, during the animations, which none of the other platforms showed, even though it was part of the instructions. And the vertical, horizontal, and rotational movements are correct as well. And this was actually just in one prompt, which was the original prompt given. The next test is the drag and drop test. Uh, where we asked it to create a grid of colored cards or emojis and we can drag any of them anywhere on the screen and when dropped they snap into place with a small bounce animation. When they collide they also swap positions. So this was honestly the hardest to get right by the LLMs because two out of three platforms were extremely buggy in their implementation and the drag and drop behavior was not correct by the end of many refinements and improvements that were provided. For example, let's open the React app and even though the drag gesture works, but the drop logic never worked in this. The thread was at least 10 prompts just to get to this state because earlier even the drag logic was incorrect. And when I'm dragging it, since it's a browser, it's activating the pull to refresh flow, which also was a UX flow. And even after 10 prompts, we did not spend more time on it. And that suggests that generating correct functional code for complex tasks in this framework was a challenge for AI. Performance wise as well, it felt a bit stiff, but can't comment on it because it was buggy. React Native also could not get the logic right after the first eight prompts and it would never get the coordinates right for the drag or for the drop and it seems to be jumping around all over the place. The drag and drop gesture, however, is definitely smoother than React though. With Flutter, this was the result after two prompts. It has the smoothest drag and drop out of the three with a realistic physics-based drop animation, and the gesture tracking is also accurate and the swap logic also work perfectly. The next test was to create a page with a bunch of video players, uh, approximately 12 video players that are playing a video together in the same page at the same time to stress test the performance of video playing for all these platforms. So here in React, uh, let's just make sure that we have 12 concurrent videos playing at the same time. So to actually stress test this experiment and even though there is a slight lag in the video playback or some jitters, I think this performed very well where the UI thread was not blocked uh, when the videos were loading and the scroll is pretty smooth enough as well. 
Now with React Native's video playback test, uh, the video is also loaded pretty instantly and the playback is uh, very smooth. Like React, the UI thread was also not blocked and the scrolling remained fluid if you notice it. This is mostly because React Native uh, uses the phone's native UI components. It tells the OS uh, to render its own native video players and the video decoding is also handed on the background thread so the UI thread is not blocked. With uh, Flutter the videos also begin playing almost instantly after the initial load however the app's performance I think breaks down when you try to scroll. The UI doesn't just lag it also freezes sometimes. Uh, and this is because of how Flutter works under the hood when displaying native components, right? Each video player is a native uh, OS view embedded within the Flutter UI. But when there are two or such views loading at the same time, it blocks the UI thread. Of course, this can be solved with daisy loading videos as user scrolls. But since we are keeping the conditions same across all platforms, I think React Native performed the best in this test. The next test is a gyroscope sensor test and uh, we asked it to create a ball on the screen that moves in real time based on the device orientation. So you can roll the device and the ball should uh, reflect its coordinates based on that direction. And uh, yeah, let's try out the React app first. Okay, so for React, I think this was a complete fail test uh, because even after calibrating the device many times and enabling the motion sensors in Chrome settings, it could not detect the sensors. But honestly speaking, expecting a web app to reliably access the native hardware uh, is often asking for too much. This is also because browsers intentionally block such uh, hardwares because of security reasons. So making these web apps much less dependable than a native app. Now with React Native, uh, I also don't feel this was very successful because if you notice very, very, very closely, there is a slight movement in the ball's position when the phone is tilted around. But I think it's barely negligible and unacceptable level of performance for a native app. This is also because of the data from the phone's hardware sensors has to be sent across a React Native bridge to your JavaScript code. This bridge is fast usually, but it does introduce some kind of latency and which is why the UI feels a bit disconnected in this case. Now, Flutter uh, once again performed the best in this test. It accurately detected the sensors and updated the ball's position in real time. It also, if you notice, it's added a subtle bounce physics animation, making the movement feel almost game-like, which makes sense because Flutter is used for a lot of games and physics-based apps. The next test is also a fun one where we did a shaders test where we asked the LLMs to create a full screen GPU driven color gradient that smoothly shifts and pulses like a plasma or a aurora. So let's try the React app first. Now the shaders results were pretty fun and I think React app did such a great job in achieving a true plasma and aurora effect. This is actually rendered with a uh, WebGL and achieved a good color blending, I think. And but the only minus point I would say is that it would run in 60 frame rate, which is much lower run rate compared to others, but it looks visually rich. Then we have React Native, which created these large bokeh like effects, which is quite different uh, from React and Maybe this is a platform fail or it could be an LLM fail as well, but it doesn't get the effect right, uh, but it does come pretty close, right? And uh, this is rendered with React Native's Kia engine, which wraps the Kia engine with uh, a JavaScript bridge. The frame rate is 90 in this case, which is the device's frame rate, which is good. Flutter, in fact, did a very good job in achieving a glowy effect with uh, very fluid transitions and comes very close to the React app's result. It feels more like a lighting simulation than a color feel actually. And this runs on Flutter's new impeller engine, which uses Vulkan natively on Android for direct GPU rendering. 
in this case i'm actually torn between react and flutter in who did a better job but uh, yeah i think it it ties up here so so after running all the six tests here's what we found out the web app performed well for basic ui and quick loading but struggled with features that relied on the native hardware things like sensors and high frame rate animations were not its strength the react native app performed well for most interfaces and was the most stable for video playback but we saw noticeable drops in frame consistency during heavy animations scrolling and gesture tests it also did not perform well when it had to rely on the native hardware like the sensors flutter build which is used in dreamflow apps stayed the smoothest overall for animations gestures sensors and shaders were all fluid and responsive However, it did show some hiccups in multi-video playback. So now you can choose your own winner based on what you value. And the next time you evaluate an AI app builder, make sure to check what platform its apps run on and decide based on what you need from your app. If you value performance, native feel and high frame rate animations, then Flutter might be the right choice for you. And that's exactly what Dreamflow lets you build with in minutes but at the same time we all know that iteration matters as well that's why dreamflow is the only platform that lets you visually update your ui and access your actual flutter code all in the same platform so choose wisely because it's not just about how quickly you can build it's also about how reliably your app performs once it's in your users hands